everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Eva and this is where I make fashion fun and food simple. Now recently I've been making a lot of instant slash boxed cake and cookies and pastries, you know that stuff. The stuff where it's like you just add water, eggs, and milk or whatever. Very few ingredients and everything's done for you. It's cheap and obviously you can't really customize it or anything but I mean, it's practical if you're lazy or if um, you guys eat a lot of desserts and don't have time to make a whole bunch of them. So I think after baking without and with instant cake mixes, I've kind of got a little bit of expertise here and there. So I wanted to share with you guys what I learned or what I already know, so maybe you can help improve your instant cake making, and also if you have any other tips, please leave them down below. First things first, getting the cake out of the pan or whatever you're taking out of the pan, it can get really, really sticky or like it can get messy or maybe you might over oil it and then it starts to like shrink from the sides. This is the solution that I found was phenomenal. What you're gonna wanna do is take some parchment or wax paper, cut out a circle around the base of the pan so that you have a shape. It's okay if it's a little bigger, no big deal. As well as cut out some strips for the sides about approximately the same length. All you're going to want to do is take the wax paper and just line the entire pan. Also another mini tip in there is to just use butter or oil or something just a little bit so that you can just glue it to the sides and it'll stay there. Okay, I'm very, very picky with my vanilla cakes. They have to be fluffy and light. Why is it just vanilla cake? I don't know. I just, it has to be fluffy or else I'm just not gonna like it. So this is basically what you do with normal baking, is you take the egg whites by itself. Don't need the egg yolk yet. You can mix that in later with everything else. And then you're just going to fluff it up into stiff peaks and fold it in. The reason why you're folding is because you don't want to pop the bubbles that you kind of just put into the egg whites. And it really just adds a lot of air into your cake and it makes it so fluffy. Okay, so let's talk about icing cakes. Icing cakes is not easy, especially if you're using standard icing that's from instant cakes. And it, I'm not gonna lie, it does kind of peel away some of the cake, kind of breaks it up sometimes just because it's so thick. I actually don't really like frosting it if I'm just thinking instant cake because I'm just gonna eat it. So the easiest way to frost it really quickly and still have it look nice and not have to go like make sure everything is nice and covered completely blah blah blah, don't worry. All you have to do is melt it a lot. So take an, about however much you think we need to cover your cake. I usually take a giant scoop and then just put it in a bowl, stick it in the microwave for like 10 to 15 seconds. Mix it around when it's liquidy enough. All you have to do is just pour it right on top of the cake. And you can also drip it on the sides and it'll just look like a nice drippy effect. And you really didn't put much effort into it. You literally just poured the entire thing on top. If you do want to get slightly fancy with this, all you have to do is just put the cake on top of a rack and do it. And that way you won't have like a pool of icing around the cake if it's on a plate after. <laughs> The problem with box cakes that I find that a lot of people have is that there isn't too much customization. Yes, there's a huge selection at the grocery store, but the reason why people always want to make their own cakes is because they want to adjust the recipe and usually box cakes already come with everything that you need really that you can adjust. So if you do want to adjust it yourself, my tip is to get some of your spices. Just pull it out, who cares? Your raisins, your nuts, whatever you have lying around the house, cinnamon, I don't know. Just take the spices and add about a tablespoon or so into the mix and you'll have it flavored. So that way it's kind of like a customized version and you can kind of trick your friends into saying, I made this cake all by myself. I customized it even though it's an instant cake. What about amping up the flavor for boxed cakes? Well, a lot of the recipes that you'll see on the boxes will say that all you need is some oil of some sort. And yes, oil is nice, it's very cheap, and honestly, like, it's gonna take forever to go through this if I'm just using it for baking. But if you do wanna amp up the flavor and make it more moist and rich and flavorful, go for butter instead. You can look up a quick conversion on Google if you'd like to see um, how much butter to oil you need to put, but it really does help the flavor. 
Okay, so if you're handling cake and you find that it's crumbling a lot, and what I mean by crumbling isn't it's breaking apart in your hands, it's most likely because you are handling it when it's not completely cool. When it's warm, I feel like it's it's literally like hair. When it's warm, it's more fragile. You need to wait for it to cool to actually do anything rough with it. So before you try and take your cake out of a pan, or before you try and flip it, or whatever, wait till it's completely cool, and that is especially applies to icing because obviously the icing is going to melt off or sink in or it's just going to peel away all the cake with your spatula. Alright, so this one's kind of obvious to some of you guys, but I'm just going to stress this because it is so important to not just instant baking, but regular baking. If you want everything to be combined nicely with minimal clumps, you're going to want to take your time and mix the liquids and the non-liquid solids, I guess, <laughs> separately together so that they both combine together. And then you're going to want to slowly add in the liquid, mix it in with the solids, just so that it all combines and it becomes almost like a pasty thing. And then just slowly add more liquids in. That way you aren't really having as many air pockets of like dry clumps because you're working with small bits. Also, if you don't have a cake pan, which I feel you, we didn't have a cake pan for a very long time, is to just bake the cake inside a mug. All you have to do is just fill it up to about like halfway to two thirds of the mug, and then just stick in the microwave for about two to three minutes, depending on how powerful your microwave is. And to check if it's done, all you have to do is take like a chopstick, shish kebab stick, toothpick, I don't know, anything that you can stab into it and just stab it in. And if it comes out nice and clean and not like battery and stuff, it's cooked. Okay, and this last tip I actually tested out with my previous baking video with trying to make a cake inside of a mug. And that was quite interesting, but it does work. So if you are living alone and you only want like one or two portions at a time, but you don't want to use the entire cake box mix because you're like, I don't know if I want to be eating cake all week. JK, who says that? You want to eat cake every day. But aside from that, <laughs> if you do want to portion out your box cake, all you have to do is look at the ingredients, see how many eggs are in it, and that's... I would say that's a pretty good estimate of how you can portion out everything. Usually for all of mine, there's three eggs, so I usually portion out the box cake into three different portions. And from there, you just divide everything by three and you mix it all up. Okay, so those are all my tips for baking instant slash box cakes. If you did like this video, please make sure you give me a big thumbs up, subscribe for weekly videos on Sunday, and don't forget to leave me down below any baking tips or even anything related to baked cakes that you've done, experiences, you know, all that stuff. We'll have a nice chat and everything. I'll see you all very soon. Bye!